Now I'm moving along slowly, but thoroughly, and giving my interpretation of Galatians chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Do you keep the law day in and day out? Seven days a week? Do you keep the ceremonial Jewish law 52 weeks out of the year? Now in general, what is the law? What is the purpose of the law? Well, it's to judge the guilty, not to acquit them. It's to judge the guilty. Now let me use myself as a guinea pig here. If for 20 years I never got a speeding ticket, I was never a mile over, I never was caught breaking the law in all of Botetourt County for 20 years. Then one day, I get stopped by a forester in the Jefferson National Forest cutting firewood without a permit. I'd get one stiff fine for that. The law of the land doesn't give out rewards for obeying, doing what you're supposed to do. The law penalizes. It punishes. It disciplines that law. The law will give up one to condemnation. Judgment from God. Now human nature falls short of perfection. We're sinners. We're cursed. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident. For the just shall live by faith. When it comes to keeping laws of the workplace, laws of a nation, laws out in public, and in this text, Paul's talking about the law of the Old Testament, the ceremonial laws, and the Torah, it requires perfect obedience. So by no way, shape, or form is the law to be the rule for justification. Now through the Old Testament knowledge of the law, Paul knows so well, he's preaching through his words, shows these Galatians that the righteous shall live by faith. They, as well as we, need to be fastened and studious reading the gospel word. It's a lifestyle. There was never... Anyone walking on earth that I've read of that way back in the Old Testament that was justified and saved by keeping and obeying laws. If someone knows of anybody, enlighten me. Let me know in the comments. Who was saved for keeping the law? Now all who believed and today believe on Jesus Christ become heirs of Abraham's blessing. Faith. Christ became a curse for us. It's a part of what the Christian lifestyle daily is to be, to stand for Christ, serving. We know what's expected from Christ as a slave servant. So we live to abide with all our being, to behave and live according to the law, the way we should go. But dang it, we fall short, don't we? That ought to make us drop to our knees. We all fall short. The soul will never be at peace, never, to trust in ourselves and worldly material possessions in the end are valueless. There's nothing, nothing we can buy, nothing we can do with our own two hands. We need Christ and we need to live in the word as a way of, we look at our cell phones all the time, don't we? That's the number one thing everybody does, gulp down at those cell phones. If you can do that, you can take the time to pray for a minute, 
or do what you can to stay in the spirit or spirit or get into the word a little bit after you eat lunch on your lunch break. It's a way of life. The only rest is to trust and have faith. Verse 12. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Every single circumstance in this life has a reaction to one choice or another. If you're planting kale in the spring and you have not the patience to sow till after the last frost, well, you sowed in vain. You had to choose to plant before the danger of the frost was over or after. I often have the same trait of impatience myself when putting starts out, but Paul's explaining to the people of Galatia that, well, look, listen, Paul didn't preach Judaism, okay? The law is it's not based on a response of faith, but on our actions, our works. The law just can't deal with sin and guilt. It is sin and guilt. So it's one or the other. The works of the law or faith in Christ. The man that does the law lives by them. Verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Now I said this earlier in verse 10, the law condemns. We are not rewarded for having to, so to speak, keeping the works of the law. I'm just paraphrasing Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Paul tells young Timothy that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and the disobedient, the ungodly and sinners, for murderers and such. And when we take our mind through the day off the guidance of the Spirit, letting Satan lure us, Lure us into carnal thought and behavior. God deals with us accordingly, don't he? So cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Paul knew the Old Testament. And he's quoting part of Deuteronomy 21 right here. The capital punishment then in Israel was done by stoning. To hang a criminal after death by stoning was so the lawbreaker could be on a public display to be made a spectacle of. So Jesus went to the cross, which was a tree of death, hung on the tree, hung on the cross. You're familiar with it. So he went to the cross, which was the tree of death, and made it a tree of life for humanity, all humanity that's willing to submit their being to him in their life. And we have a many sacrifices of the flesh to give up. Daily, just think about that. Just in daily living, the sacrifices of the flesh that we need to give up to take up our cross. Every one of us has sacrifices to make. And do we do it, my friends? Do we make those sacrifices? Till next time.